year teacher and this was my first time firing the kiln this past week. And I'm sure we all know how nervous and crazy it can be the first time you're frying the kiln. I wanna share with you some tips that I thought of and honestly, I feel like a kind of a genius after doing this because I was able to watch my kiln from home using a Google Meet. It took off a lot of anxiety and I'm gonna show you how I set it up to make sure that everything is working properly while I'm out of the building. So besides that, I have some other tips and tricks as far as trackers um, and welting cones and temperature gauges and also how to keep that manual with you when you are out of the building from your kiln. So my first thing is, I borrowed this from my librarian here at school. It is a tripod attached to an uh, iPad and I use Google Meet to record or do a live stream of the temperature gauge on my kiln. Now this kiln um, at my elementary school is has a digital adapter so it shows the temperature on the screen in bright red letters that's lit up so I can see it when my automatic classroom lights turn off okay so I was able to use this um, I connect it to my phone what you have to do is you have to have the host for the meeting on your phone because if you have it at the tablet at your school and you'd like to add yourself to the meeting while you're at home, you are gonna be able to do that physically because you have to do it off the tablet. So make sure when you're setting up your Google Meet, you're having it on your phone. Send yourself an invite and then add yourself on your tablet. Do a test. So once I turn off the lights and I have video to show you this, um, make sure that the camera is in focus on the red light. So I was able to see the temperature go up while I was driving in my car if I need to check and pull over or I could see it as I'm sitting in bed at home and it was such a relief to know where exactly my kiln is at is it working um, and is everything working the way it should as far as even the air um, filters and system to kind of keep the room cool as well so uh, just this it depends on your kiln first off mine has a digital adapter so I could see things if you don't have the digital adapter if you just want to make sure it's getting hot and if it's cooling down, I could see the heat through the crack between the lid and the base of the kiln. So I actually got to watch it get really hot and really cool. Um, so, and I was able to time when I needed to be on my Google Meet or when I could be at home doing other things through a kiln firing tracker that I did. This is really awesome. So throughout the day, I suggest you mark the time and the temperature is at every hour. So I was able to predict that my kiln is gonna max out on its hot temperature at about 9.15 at night. And that was super helpful. Um, I also mark on this log all the firing. So this is for every single firing and this is just a kind of a quick sneak peek to keep a um, record of how many times the kiln has been fired in my school year and when the last time, what classes uh, it was, you know, fire for and all that stuff. Now, I have a new teacher and I did actually press five instead of cone 05 my first time. And luckily because I had the tracker and my maintenance staff was able to get um, in on this with me, they kept also track for me as well. I shared my personal cell phone number in case of emergency. So uh, yeah, sure enough, 10 o'clock, he called me and goes, Ms. Dykeman, I don't think this is right. And he was able to talk him through it. So we did emergency shut down that one night, but of course you're going through your mind going, what did I do wrong? Oh no. Luckily for me, I used my phone and I took pictures or I used an app to scan in the kiln manual. So from my home, I was able to decipher maybe where I went wrong. And then eventually kind of figuring it out and highlighting, you know, reading through the manual, I did prior, but kind of narrowing it down um, to what the problem might have, could have been. I figured I forgot to put the 05 because this digital adapter has a setting just particularly for this firing, but I still need to put the 05. So live and learn, right? I did a second firing that same week to figure it out and use my trackers, had everything set up, and then I discovered the Google Meet stream and everything went so much smoothly and I could watch it and it really just took that anxiety off. So best thing is to just be safe and have all your tools with you, such as your manual and your trackers. And then another thing um, that I wanna share with you is welting cones, if you're not too familiar. So this was the very first firing. 
Uh, my kiln got up to 2,500 plus degrees and it wasn't supposed to. The goal was 1,888, uh, which is what I found out after reading the manual. Not a big deal. Um, live and learn. So welting cones are kind of an older way of checking to make sure that your kiln is correctly getting up to the heat it's supposed to and cooling all the way down correctly. These cones are set at different temperatures or um, these like little pyramid things and when they get up to a certain temperature they kind of wilt over and they should be wilting um, and at different temperatures. So this one might be um, at a lower temperature it wilts and this one's at a higher. Obviously if it's too hot uh, they melt. <laughs> So there's that. Another thing I'd like to share with you is to have a temperature gauge of the room. Um, this was one concern, even though I have an awesome air ventilation system that I turned on as soon as I leave the building, because at that point the kiln was getting hot enough and I could really feel it. Um, my kiln is in my classroom and the vents can kind of vibrate and be rather loud. So I turn them on in between my classes to make sure the air is flowing for my students. But to have a temperature gauge, this will tell you um, the temperature of the room uh, around your kiln. This is just really nice to know if it is getting hot and if your air filters and all that um, air duct work is working for your kiln. So that is a little bit about what I did being a first teacher and a first time fire in the kiln, learning a lot, but also using technology to the advantage that it, you know, it offers through Google Meet and setting up a tripod so I could actually see my kiln. All right, well, that's all for now. Good luck and don't worry uh the worst that can happen you know it is a giant oven but it's insulated and it is fire safe for a reason so i'd say just give it give it a shot and having all your tools ready uh you'll be ready for no matter what all right have a good day bye